thresholds, brinks, barriers, boundaries, edges. Where are we emerging or divesting as we move through these endless days? We are on a journey, even as most of us sit at home wondering, when will we get back to our lives, our real lives? A very special scholar, John O'Donohue, has this to say. At any time, you can ask yourself, at which threshold am I now standing? At this time in my life, what am I leaving? Where am I about to enter? What is preventing me from crossing my next threshold? What gift would enable me to do it? A threshold is not a simple boundary. It's a frontier that divides two different territories, rhythms and atmospheres. Indeed, it is a lovely testimony to the fullness and integrity of an experience or a stage of life that it intensifies toward the end into a real frontier that cannot be crossed without the heart being passionately engaged and woken up. At this threshold, a great complexity of emotions comes alive. Confusion, fear, excitement, sadness, and hope. This is one of the reasons such vital crossings were always clothed in ritual. It is wise in our own life to be able to recognize and acknowledge the key thresholds, to take our time, to feel all the varieties of presence that accrue there, to listen inward with complete attention until you hear the inner voice calling you forward. That was John O'Donohue. So what is your inner voice saying to you? Maybe we hear more questions than answers. We wonder if we are in a sci-fi movie because this thing we are going through can't possibly be real. In fact, some people are in so much denial that they are rebelling against the protective measures that would help contain COVID-19. It's hard times we're living through, and yet we are on the dawn of a new day. How are we facing it? Admittedly, some of us are doing better than others. This sheltering in place thing takes skills. It takes skills that you already have. Oh, like what, you might ask? Your beating heart and wholesome breath. To continue to exist through this nerve-wracking, difficult time takes skills that you've been practicing all your lives. Take some deep breaths. Take some deep breaths when you are anxious. Take a really long, deep breath when you are about to lose your temper or say something you can't take back or before you raise your hand to your child or a family member. Count to 10 or 20 if necessary. Or count breaths all day if that's what it takes to save your relationships. You have your hearing and sight, your senses. Though these attributes may have dimmed or even been lost for many of us, to some degree, we still use our senses to listen as we learn new things about how to keep on keeping on. We see through the news what is happening around the world. We see tragedy in a hurting world. We see bravery from people who never imagined they were signed up to be our heroes. We see brutality and ignorance, and our hearts break. But we will take our broken hearts and not only grieve, but we will also work to mend those places where marginalized people have been ignored or mistreated. Your tears and heartbreak are useless. 
unless you find ways to interrupt oppression, hate, mongering, and fear. We will be the invisible heroes and healers who do donate to just causes, who find ways to feed the hungry, who demand equity in health care. We will be our best selves. We will be on the watch for injustice. We will witness. We will work. Because we know that the act of witnessing is not passive and that it is not complete until we take action. I want to revisit a topic I preached about a number of years ago, and that is prayer. For some, it is more palpable, palatable to say thoughts or wishes, as in, I'm thinking of you, keeping you in my thoughts. I contend that these are kinds of prayers, no matter what you call them, and I would be willing to call them something different if someone offered another word that fits. People who don't consider themselves religious often consider themselves spiritual, and they may disavow that their entreaties are directed toward any kind of being. I agree that involvement with the spirit, God, or deity of any kind is not necessarily important when we pray or meditate. I think maybe most agnostics and atheists would claim that they don't pray. But I have some definitions of my own that may bring you and them into the circle of prayers. There's a book called How do you spell God? Answers to the big questions from around the world. An interdenominational project by Rabbi Mark Gelman and Monsignor Thomas Harton. Listen to what they have to say about prayer. The reason all religions have prayers or chants or meditations is that all human beings need to say four things in their lives. Those four things that all people need to say are thanks, wow, gimme, whoops. And in the, in the book, each one of those words is followed by an exclamation point. And if you're really good, you can get all four elements into one prayer. Dear Lord or Spirit or Earth, I love you. Wow and know you love me, thanks. Even though I am not worthy, whoops. P.S. If it isn't asking too much, could you please help the Cubs win the pennant? Amen. That's a gimme. And the Cubs did win, so prayer works. I contend that if all people need to say thanks, wow, give me, and whoops, then prayer is something all people do. All people. It has nothing to do with being religious or spiritual or addressing a deity. It's part of being human. And in this time of desperate measures, we need to remember our humanity because we are moving closer and closer as a nation to acts of greed, cynicism, and narcissism that bring us to the brink of self-destruction. And finally, we need imagination. What kind of world can you imagine as we come out of this virus situation? Can you imagine peoples of the world joining together in concert for good? Can you imagine that we will now really work toward a better environment? Can you imagine what it would be like for us all to be together at the same level of health care, of work, of doing good works? Can you imagine that world? 
I think you can because I know you've done it at times in your lives. And I think this is the time when we all need to imagine. When we all need to use our senses, our hearts, to step over the barriers, to come to the threshold, to come to the brink and to the joy of what our lives can be. May it be so. Thank you.